I wanted to quickly show you how to use this engraved illustration effect. It's an action in Photoshop. Um, this guy has uh, some instructions, but I couldn't quite figure it all out, so I wanted to make a video so I could remember next time when I try to use this really cool filter, or it's an action actually in Photoshop. Um, I will put the link underneath my uh, tutorial here uh, so you can download it. But let's go into Photoshop and start looking at how this is done. The first step you're going to have to actually do is download his action, which um, here it is downloaded in my files. And there's going to be a pattern here. And this is the very first thing you need to do is load this pattern into your Photoshop um, uh, patterns area. And to do that, you want to go to your Applications folder and find Photoshop. Where is my Applications? Um, then you're finding Photoshop here. I have a million Photoshops. Thanks, Adobe, for installing so many. And then go into your presets and find patterns that are down here. And then I'm going to just simply drag this engraving effect into the patterns folder of my preferences uh, presets of Photoshop. I'm not going to actually do this because I already have done it. You can see it here. Then go back to Photoshop and you're going to have to find the paintbrush tool, which is here. It's actually located under the gradient tool, so it's hidden from sight at first. You want to roll over this, click on it, and hold it, and then choose the paint bucket tool. Then go up here to pattern, um, because by default it's going to be set to foreground, so you want to choose pattern here. And then these are already loaded in here, but if I wanted to load them, which they're not going to actually be here by default, even though you put them in your presets folder, um, you want to come to this little settings icon here and then come down here to the effects. It will show up here because you've already loaded it into that folder. Um, so click on that and then it's going to ask you if it wants to append it. Um, I'm not going to do that because it's already here, but if I were to hit append this, they would show up here. Um, they would just show up duplicated and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit cancel. But now they're in here. Now you actually want to select one of these. Um, so while you're in this paint bucket tool, select any one of these. There's different darknesses, basically. Um, so you might want to try a few different ones and see which one gives you the best effect. The next step is to go to your actions bar. Um, and so if, if that's under window actions, if you don't see it by default, make sure it's turned on. And then these are already here loaded. But if I wanted to load these, I would come in here to load actions, which is way down here. I don't know why they don't put it at the top. Click here on load actions, and then you're going to go in and get that action. Um, here's my new one. So here's that action that I would load. And I would double click on that and it would load. I don't actually want to do that because I have already loaded them, but here they are here after they've been loaded. Then you just pick the one that you want to do. Um, we'll just try heavy. And you have to actually expand this little folder and then put that here so that um, it's uh, available and you want to click on one of these because this little play button isn't available if you have the main folder selected. So click on one of the individual ones and I don't know if this matters but I turned on this little thing to toggle. I don't even know what this means but I have it on. They weren't on by default these little squares here. I don't know if that matters but uh, just simply click on them if they're not available and it's not working. Um, and then the next step is actually to, to hit return like a hundred times it seems. I don't know if there's a way to autoplay this, but um, here's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to hit play, and now it's going to go through all these little things, which I can just click on the OK, or it's even easier to hit OK or return on your um, keyboard. And so I'm just kind of hitting OK, 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 and it's going to go through a whole bunch of these. And just keep hitting return until you get to the end. Um, it does seem like a lot. I wish there was a way to autoplay, but I think you can adjust this if you wanted to. If you knew how it would adjust, you could actually use it to adjust. But once you get to the end, it's probably about, I don't know, 25 to 50 clicks on your return bar. Um, then you get the final result, which is this engraved style um, look. So uh, here's another example of one to show you kind of how different things look different. Um, and you can also try the different patterns too so that um, just go back to your little pattern thing here and choose different ones if you feel like it needs to be darker or lighter. Um, and you can also, oops, 
you can also use um, one of these different actions as well. So that's it. That's a quick tutorial on how to use that action. And again, this is from Spoon Graphics, um, their blog, which is their free engraved illustration effect action for Photoshop. I love it. It's a great way to turn photos and paintings and other things into engravings that you can use as one color art um, for things like laser etchers and that kind of thing. Um, I was using this. My sister actually turned me on to this, and it was for a bookmaking class where we were etching covers in wood and we wanted to have an etching effect so she found this wonderful um, uh, illustration action uh, for Photoshop that Rick works really well so that's it